Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's try to see if we can simplify these radical expressions. So starting with the first one, I noticed that this is the square root and we have x to the fifth. So definitely if the power is greater than the root, we can simplify that. And 64 can be written as 8 times 8. So let's go ahead and rewrite it like this. This is equal to the square root of 8 squared because 8 squared is 64. And this can be written as x squared times x squared times x. Notice when I multiply these, I add the exponents, they add up to 5, and then I have a y by itself, and of course, we cannot do much about that one. And notice, anytime there is something with a square which equals the square root, we can simply take it outside the radical sign. So this becomes 8 times x times x, and then these two are left, times the square root of x times y, and of course x times x becomes x squared, so this is 8x squared times the square root of x times y. Notice whenever there is an odd component, an odd power, you cannot take that out of a square root, but we have an even power that comes out of the square root, and so that's how we do that. Over here it's the same thing except now we have the fourth root, so therefore, we're looking for powers of multiples of 4, 4, 8, 12, and so forth. So notice that this can be written, let me put the equal sign over here. This can be written as the fourth root of x to the fourth x cubed. Notice that 3 plus 4 gives us 7, but this way, notice that we're able to take this outside the radical sign. And with the 11, with the uh, y, we can write y to the fourth, y to the fourth, y cubed. 4 plus 4 plus 3 adds up to the power of 11. Now, this can be simplified as we take this x out and those two y's, so this becomes x times y times y. Take this one out, take that one out, take that one out, and we have left the fourth root of x cubed and y cubed. And those cannot be taken out because the power here is smaller than the root. Then combining those, this is x y squared times the fourth root of x cubed times y cubed. So that's kind of the strategy. You look for those powers that you can then reduce by taking the square root or the fourth root out. Here, again, we take the square root. So let's put the equal sign over here. So this can be written as the square root of x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared. Add all those up. That gives us x to the 10 power times y to the 11 power. We'll deal with the y later because I'm out of room here. So since there's five of them, this can be written as x to the fifth times the square root of y to the 11th. So I separated the two and I was able to take five of these, pull them out and write it like this. I can do the same over here. This can be written as x to the fifth times the square root of y to the 10th times y to the first power. Of course, I don't have to write to the first power, but just for clarity. And notice when I take the square root of y to the tenth, I get y to the fifth. So this is equal to x to the fifth, y to the fifth, times the square root of y. And that's how we simplify this expression right there. And after a while, you can start seeing the, the pattern. So you have 10 divided by the root gives you x to the fifth, y to the 10th, so we can write y to the 11th as y to the 10th times y to the 1st. So y to the 10th, you take 10 divided by the root, which is 2, and you get y to the 5th. Over here, the first thing we want to do is write this as a cube root of 4x in the numerator divided by the cube root of 9y squared in the denominator. Now notice that 9 is 3 squared, but since we're taking the cube root of that, we cannot take that outside the radical. And that's as far as we can go. Everything is simplified to the simplest form that we can, and nothing else can come out. So that is how we simplify these types of radicals. That's how it's done.